Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Po, and today I'm doing my recommendations and TBR for my March monthly priority, which is Middle Eastern and Indian heritage. If you're not familiar with my monthly priorities, I will link a video about them as well as a playlist for them below. But basically in March, I'm just gonna be focusing on reading as many uh, Middle Eastern and Indian authors and diaspora authors as I can, just to get a little bit more focus on those authors in March. Um, it's not the only thing I'm gonna be reading, but I'm gonna try to prioritize those authors. So in this video, I'm gonna give some recommendations for books that I've read in the past year by these authors that I absolutely love, as well as talk about what I'm gonna read this March. First, my recommendations, starting with Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri. This is such a great fantasy novel that is really a world inspired by Mughal India and has such amazing world building and magic. I loved the magic in this, especially because it is based on this sort of spiritual dance that is related to the Bharatnatyam dance, which I absolutely love. It's a very cool dance style. Um, and and it is really beautiful world building. It's a very slow novel that is atmospheric. I loved the main character. I loved some of the discussions in it. It's got a really sweet romance. So very much a wonderful story, although it does have a little bit of drama in it. I really like this fantasy. Um, there are some good reviews out there by booktubers that I love. Jocelyn at Yogi with a Book, Isabella at Stubbornly Bookish, and Joe at Final Blow Joe all have great reviews of this. So I'm gonna link all of those below if you're interested. Another recommendation that I have is Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga. This is a contemporary middle grade in verse that is about a little Syrian girl who has to flee Syria with her mother due to the civil unrest there to come to the US. And it's all about that way that she feels both the connection to her home as well as wanting to fit in in the US. Um, and it's, it's in verse, it's absolutely beautiful. It's really powerful. I have a whole review for this so I will link that below but if you love middle grade if you love verse if you love stories of refugees or immigrants it is just top-notch my other recommendation is Good Talk by Mira Jacob, which I think is fantastic. Mira Jacob is Indian American and her story, her sort of memoir that is in this graphic memoir novel is fantastic. It's basically a bunch of anecdotes, of conversations that she's had with people in her life, her son, her husband, her parents, her friends, um, talking about her experiences and especially her identity as being somebody who is visibly brown, as being someone who is a woman, dealing with the US and the way that it is, and in particular, dealing with her place in it as things change, things like 9-11, things like the election of Trump, all of those things. It is really, really great talking about sort of that experience of being the child of immigrants and just so many great conversations in this. I absolutely loved this, as did my husband Sush, and we have a whole discussion video that is quite long, um, but I will link that below if you're interested. It is just a fascinating, really, really well done graphic memoir. Now moving on to my TBR for this month. I have seven books that I would like to prioritize, but these are not the only books by Middle Eastern and Indian heritage authors that I will pick up. And I would pick up plenty of other things that aren't even by this priority this month as well. But these are just ones that I want to prioritize putting holds on at my library and try to get to if I can. I'd love to get to at least five of these. The first book I'd like to read is Cracking India, also known as Ice Candy Man by Babsi Sidwa, who is a Punjabi Parsi Pakistani author. This is a book that I've heard really great things about from Nashwa at Nashwa S, who I will link below. And I'm gonna be buddy reading this with Key at Books and Key, who I will link below. This book is a historical fiction set in 1947 um, about the partition between India and Pakistan, which was a very, very bad thing. It was a very difficult, lots of people died. Um, told from the perspective of a 10 year old girl with polio, which is all um, own voices for the author. So I think this is gonna be absolutely fascinating. 
Next on my list is Song of a Captive Bird by Jasmine Darsnick, who is an Iranian-American author. This is a book that I'm going to be buddy reading with Jen at Remembered Reads, who I will link below, and I'm very excited. This is a historical fiction about a real person. So this is about um, a famous feminist Iranian poet in the 1950s called Farukh Farakzad, and it sounds like it's just going to be such an interesting take on a real historical person. Next is Realm of Ash by Tasha Suri, who is an Indian-British author. This is the sequel to Empire of Sand that I have been meaning to get to for such a long time. This follows the sister of the main character from the first book, and I just really, really want to read this. Next is The Map of Salt and Stars by Zain Jokudar, who is a Syrian-American trans man, and this is a sort of dual timeline historical fiction, contemporary fiction, following um, in the historical timeline in the 13th century, a girl who dresses as a boy in order to become a map maker's apprentice and travels around um, sort of the Middle East and North Africa, as well as in the contemporary timeline in 2011, a Syrian American girl who goes back to Syria but deals with the Syrian civil war and has to flee. So sort of a refugee story. Everything about this book sounds so good. It, I love the dual timeline. I love the historical aspect. I love just stories about immigration and refugees. And it's just, I think this is going to be an excellent book. Next is Celestial Bodies by Jilka Alharthi, who's an Omani author, translated from Arabic by Marilyn Booth. This is a historical fiction that I've heard amazing things about from Russell at Ink and Paper blog, as well as from Apocalypse Reader, both of whom I will link below. It is set in the 1950s um, and decades after, following three sisters in Oman, kind of who take different paths in their life and looking at the changes, the rapid changes that Oman went through in those decades and it just sounds like a really good story about families and about a country and about change and I love historical fiction. Next is The Lost Arabs by Omar Sakar who is a queer Arab Australian author uh, and this is a poetry collection all about identity and sexuality and nationality things that I absolutely love to read about in my poetry. I think that I heard about this from Jen at Remembered Reads who I will link below. And lastly is A Woman Like Her, also known as The Sensational Life and Death of Kandil Baluk by Sanam Maher, who is a Pakistani author. This is a nonfiction about a social media Pakistani star who was killed in 2016 by her brother in an honor killing. I have heard amazing things about this from Nashwa at Nashwa S, as well as from Key at Books and Key, both of whom I will link below. Okay, so those are my recommendations as well as my TBR for Middle Eastern and Indian Heritage for March. If you guys have read any of these, if you have any recommendations for me of other books you think I should try to pick up, uh, if you think any of these are particularly good and I should definitely prioritize them, anything at all, just go ahead and leave me a comment down below.